So I just got done watching The Last of Us uh, HBO show, and uh, it's an interesting one. It was very, very interesting. I have a lot to say about it. Um, there were definitely some changes there that they made really good for the most part, which really impressed me. Um, but I want to go into it. I want to dive into it. I'll give it a score at the end as well, just for the sake of, you know, we always do that with these kind of things. We review it. We'll throw a score on it. Why not? Um, but to be clear, before we even jump into this, I don't have any video footage of the episode up because I will get copyright striked right away. Instead, we're going to use gameplay footage um, from the original game, all the remake of it. And I think that'll do well enough. We won't spoil anything for anybody who's probably watching this who has not seen the or, or does not know what happens in the full game. But um, I, I imagine that most people watching this will probably, you know, have an idea of what happens uh, in the story of The Last of Us. Mind you, they have changed quite a bit. So some of it's still to be a surprise, which I like. I like that a lot. So let's jump into this. Um, starting off, uh, I love how they explained what it is that makes these people become infected. Uh, they are fun guy, right? Um, and there's a lot to it. And we actually knew this a long time ago um, as Neil Druckmann actually goes into what it is, how he came up with the idea. And so I think it's excellent that they explain it in the beginning of the show. I think it gives everybody an idea. So, because a lot of people might watch this, they'll be like, oh, it's just another zombie show. But it's not another zombie show. It's not even close to that. So I actually think that this works out really, really well because, well, now we know what it is. We know it's not zombies and the audience has an idea of what's going on. So I thought that was great. And it also added to the tone, as you could see, like at first they were laughing. They're like, ha it's so funny. You know, this is how it is. And then as he became more serious about it and it started explaining more, everyone's face in the audience, the host's face changed and it really just opened everyone's eyes and, and the tone of the show switched immediately. And then we go to the open with Sarah, Joel, and Tommy in the morning of, you know, before everything goes down. And we get to see the inter interactions between the three of them, the dynamic, and the chemistry was there right away. You felt the chemistry. You knew there was something good between these three characters. And I felt like they nailed it. They absolutely nailed it. And that's what they needed to do, you know. And then there was also a lot of lighthearted humor throughout the beginning of the show. And it was just such a great contrast with what we knew what was going to happen, right? We knew that there was going to be some seriousness afterwards. And the way they handled it was just just perfect. So Sarah's morning, um, as she would explore the, her morning it, and, and go about her morning, we saw a lot of omens, you know, ambulances, uh, police cars. Um, and then she went to go get her uh, father's watch repaired and... You know, she got rushed out of the store. And in Arabic, the lady was saying, you have no idea what's going on. I was talking to my sister on the phone. And it's just like all these omens and all these signs of bad things to come and how those actually were starting to happen, right? Like we were slowly, gradually getting there. So she gets to her neighbor's house. And obviously, as we watch this, and, and we see it as the the viewers, but... Sarah has no idea, but we see in the background the other elderly lady who shows no emotion, nothing. She just sits in her chair. All of a sudden starts moving a little bit and, and a, like a clicker. Like as we see in the game, she's moving like that. So these changes already, like, and these are a lot of changes. These are not changes. These are additions that were not in the game, but I felt added to the experience and gave us a lot more than what we originally uh, knew about the game. Like when you st open up the game, that's not how it goes. What actually happens is, you know, Sarah and Joel have their moment and it's at night and, you know, it's like, it's just so different. So eventually we get to the point of the, where we would be in the game and Sarah and Joel have a beautiful moment for his birthday They're together. She gives her father the watch and it's just great. And then Sarah falls asleep and, and we find out that the reason Tommy actually calls is because he needs bail. He was in jail. Uh, for fighting with someone in a bar. And again, another omen, another sign. Hey, oh my God, this, this is some, some stuff's happening. We got to be ready for this, you know? And uh, then Sarah wakes up and here we go. This is where things start to pick up pace and everything started happening. And the way it goes from point A to point B at that point, like it just flows so perfectly at no point in between there. Did I feel like, okay, what are we doing here? When are we going to get to the, the key moments? No, it just paced itself 
so perfectly. And I feel like that was so important uh, for the TV show, especially based on a video game where there's a lot of gameplay in between these moments, right? Like, I mean, obviously these moments weren't in the game, but when you get to the moments that are in the game, there's gameplay in between to fill it, right? In this case, there is no gameplay. So they got to fill it with something. So you have to understand that's why they're adding uh, different things that weren't in the game or they're further elaborating on information in the game that we didn't otherwise know. So I think it's a very positive experience. And honestly, just just really blown away with that moment, right? So eventually, as you know, they they don't do exactly what happens in the game. You know, Sarah wakes up in the night. She actually goes outside exploring. She sees the dog, the neighbor's dog. She goes exploring the house. She sees, uh, you know, the husband on the floor. He's injured. She sees the the old elderly lady, which I presume to be his wife, you know, on top of, I guess, what was the nanny and just not nanny, but caregiver, I will call her and just going at her. And then, you know, looks up and all of a sudden she starts moving towards her and Sarah's running away. And then Joel makes his entrance and, you know, just slowly looks at this lady and, and she's coming at him and you see the hesitation, the way everything goes. It's like, not instantly does he just start attacking her or they don't just, Tommy doesn't just shoot her right away. And again, it's, it's building up to like, okay, this is abnormal in their world, you know? And I feel like, again, they nailed all those moments and all those key points. Even though they changed it, I don't think it was changed in a bad way. I think it was better adapted for television. So I think that there's a lot of positivity here around the changes and the additions that they've made. So obviously, eventually they're trying to escape and, and you see all those key moments, the burning house, you see those those iconic moments in the story, which is excellent. And then eventually, you know, they have a car accident and, and Sarah gets out and, oh man, this is the tough part to talk about, but you know, and then he takes her and then Sarah eventually dies and just that moment where she's on the floor bleeding and Joel goes up to her and Joel's just like the way he's responding and the emotion the impact so powerful it evokes everything out of you like emotion and just like you're you're sad for these characters and they did an excellent job it still hit for me it still hit it was surprising how well it hit these characters did an excellent job like these people sorry these actors did, did an excellent job in making this believable and they brought that moment to life and and to me if you can bring that powerful first moment to life, you've given me a lot of hope for the rest of the show. And obviously, as I continue to talk about the rest of the show, you're going to notice that I'm still being very positive about it. And I'm shocked that I'm being so positive about it. So Sarah dies. And, you know, obviously, um, we have some things that change afterwards. Um, I'm not going to go through every single step here because at that point, we're going to be talking about like a 30, 45 minute video. Uh, but, you know, they, they re-enter Joel and he's doing some work. And, and you just see, you see Joel 20 years later is just so different, you know. And, and something else that I noticed, which I thought was really cool, was the jump was from 2003 to 2023. A lot of greatness around. Like, I, I love how they adapt that, especially because we just went through, the, not this, but you know what I mean? Like, we had our own situation and it's just so funny how how at the time of this airing, it's like around the same time. So I thought that was really cool. I think also that um, the way they they re-enter Joel, like they show Joel again, this man is not the man he was. This man is somebody who is damaged. This man is somebody who has gone through the most tragic thing uh, a person can go through, the loss of their child, right? So I feel like they really portray that really well. And he does. They have, the acting is just incredible. And it's so believable. Now, lastly, I want to talk, and, and again, I don't want to go into like all the excruciating detail, but I just want to talk about like moments that I felt were like big changes or th additions that I felt were really impactful. Um, and I feel like I did that. But let's talk about Ellie. Ellie, right? Like, so the one big thing that I noticed online was people were not so excited about the casting of Ellie. They said, well, she doesn't look like her. You know, uh, we don't feel that she's whatever, fit for the, the role, I guess. Um, and my thing always was that, no, she absolutely does not look like her. We can't, we can't pretend that that's the case. But she may not look the part, 
but she can act the part. Like when I hear, like if I were to close my eyes, right, and listen to her acting, like that is Ellie. That is Ellie. I totally get it. And and I feel like she knocked it out of the park. She did a fantastic job. The way she speaks, the the way she carries herself, her mannerisms, everything just shouts Ellie. And to me, that's important. It's more important to be able to act the character than to look like the character. For me personally, it makes it more believable. And to me, I had my doubts. I'm not going to pretend that I didn't have my doubts. I had my doubts. I said, I don't know. I don't know if this she's up for this, this role, but I mean, they cast her for a reason, right? Clearly, they saw this, and, and that's why they put her in that role. And, and I totally have full faith in her ability to carry, you know, that character through the rest of the show. So for me, like, that was the biggest moment was seeing how good Ellie's character was. It was like, I was shocked. I said, I don't know. You know, I don't know at first. And then even in the, the trailers and the clips, I was like, ah, I'm not feeling this. I don't know what it is. But when you watch the show and you see the full sections and the way they interact with each other, you're like, oh, wow, this is incredible. And obviously Marlene and all these other characters did a fantastic job. I felt they really did played their role well. And they brought this world to life. So as you can tell, I am praising this show. I am saying it's incredible. Everything is great about it. You know, all the moments, you know, back to back to back, just, just, God, it was so good. It was just so good. I don't know how else to put it, but to me, this was everything I could ask for and more and more truthfully. Um, I didn't think I was going to like it this much, but it is definitely a 10 out of 10 episode. To me, this episode was a 10 out of 10. I have no complaints about it. The pacing was good. The additions, the exploration of characters and uh, what happened throughout their day added to the experience. You know, everything was just an A plus, man. I don't know how else to put it. It was just an A plus. It was a 10 out of 10. And to me, that's the, that's the most you can ask for. Somebody playing a video game, getting falling in love with the characters, the world, everything about it, and then trying to make it a TV show as a challenge as it is, but they did an incredible job. And like, honestly, I, I can't wait to see the next episode and I'm excited for where this season will go and how they're going to explore every character and where they're going to make additions. And it's just, man, it's amazing. And, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how I feel. And as you can tell, I had nothing bad to say about this episode. And if I were to try to think about something bad, uh, it, it was that it ended. That's that's about the only thing I could say about it. it. Yeah, it was good, man. It was really good. So the world... Oh, also, I can't even believe I didn't even bring this up just yet. Uh, the, the budget must have been massive because, wow, the quality... Like, it just... Man, it looked like the game. Like, the world was just that good. So, like, it looked believable. The the I imagine there was a lot of CG. It looked incredible. Um, the environments looked super realistic. I thought, yeah, they, they definitely did a really good job, like rebuilding those environments for like a TV show, a set. Again, I don't know how they did. I imagine there was a lot of CG. I imagine there was a lot because obviously, especially at the end, when you see in the thunderstorm and the rain and the buildings, yeah, that, <laughs> that's a, a clear sign of, of CG. Yeah. So it looks great. And I think, yeah, 10 out of 10. Incredible episode. I can't wait for the next one. Um, and that's all I have to say about this, guys. I would love to hear your thoughts. Did you watch it? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you have not subscribed already and you want to keep up with my thoughts on PlayStation News, also PlayStation News and, you know, The Last of Us and all that good stuff, subscribe, like, comment. Let me know what you think. And we'll talk in there. And you can follow me on Twitter. Link will be in the description. And... If you want to support the channel a step further, you can always become a member. It's $1.99 Canadian a month. Every dollar gets reinvested into the channel. And I will talk to you guys all in the next one. Take care.